Alright guys, hello, welcome back. We're going to be doing another semi- or another semi-final. We haven't done a semi-final yet, we're doing another quarter-final game. Sometimes words, sometimes production. Nevertheless, I'm Zayden, here with Hinderman once again. Noble Esports, face off against Yomi's in this one. Yeah, I mean, we were going to just wait for the semis to come through, but then when I checked out who was on Yomi, I didn't realize the lineup they had and why this game would have been taking so long because Noble versus Yomi on paper seems like a very, very interesting matchup. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we didn't do picks and bans here. We're going straight into the action to give you the start of this game, so we'll follow this one through. Let's see if we're in the finals by that point. So, Noble Esports versus Yomi here. Woo Woo, Gilly, Unrelinquished TV, and Met Yankee make up Yomi. And Noble Esports, we saw earlier on Scary D adjust, BK Haste, Lou, and Juni Para in this one. And let's look at the matchups here yeah taking a look over in that soul lane it's going to be Bologna facing off against a Fenrir not what we typically see as a common matchup these days but nevertheless Bologna gonna have a little bit of a push advantage with that hammer bash coming out but at the same time Fenrir he has a lot of initial upfront burst damage Bologna has to be careful of that and then level five hits yes Bologna has to, uh Woo -woo has to be very careful of that Ragnarok if she gets anywhere near a tower yeah she can still Eagles rally out but you don't want to have to burn your ultimate just to escape from a tower in the jungle as well, we're going to see the um, Nemesis up against the Kabraken. Kabraken, very, very aggressive early on. They drop you right to side. Like oh, scary. Yeah, yeah, scary got very, very low there. Actually, going to have to leap out with the Brutalize there from that damage. But yeah, what we're going to actually see from the jungle is, is the Kabraken be looking for aggression early, as you can saw from Gilly there mm -hmm. in the lane matchup. And then after that, you'll see it transition to the Nemesis later, where she can start taking down these tanky targets. BK Hayes in mid, needs to be careful of Gilly. Yep, over in the right big. Oh, in the whirlpool, the damage coming out. Gilly with the body blocks. Backflip finally coming up unavailable. P or actually, the cripple finally falling off, rather, allowing PK Hayes to finally escape. Over in the right lane as well, Woo Woo found himself in a bit of a bad spot when some counter aggression came out from Noble Esports. So already, both these teams looking for the big plays early on. They haven't quite paid mm -hmm. off for that first blood yet, but I expect them to keep on doing what they're doing. And that you know, big bounty still sitting there. They're all looking at it, wanting to take it. Now the one thing to know as well is this mid lane matchup with Neath versus Poseidon is something you'll start seeing more often is it's a pretty much an even matchup. BK Heist has to be very very careful though and get beats early because a Whirlpool Kraken combo stops the backflip safety that BK Heist has. He's got the same sort of wave clear that Unrelinquished has with this Poseidon so it will go backwards and forwards there. Scary D very low under the tower and right, talk yeah. about that right now, did get forced under but he's got a health potion ticket. And then to take a pick, peek over in the duel lane, it's going to be Geb Shibalake facing off against Athena Medusa. That's the made you look combo. You want to look away from mm -hmm. Medusa? Athena says, no, you're not having any of that. But speaking of any of that, a taunt comes in. Lou, good stone should come in from Junipera to stop Lou from ending up in a bad spot. They've been putting that pressure quite well so far. Typically, when you're up against the Geb, you look for the taunt and pressure onto them because they can't shield themselves in the middle of a taunt. But they were able to find some decent poke onto Lou despite the stone shields from Juni. Oh, 2 minutes 20, mid and jungler still level 4 at the moment, this wave should ding them over towards level 5. You can see BK Haste there, should get off about 2 or 3 creeps, same there as well for a just, and level 5 just dinging for Yomi, so they'll both be level 5 at about 240. And then we'll see what's going to happen at these mid harpies and see if we get a rotation from Yomi, it looks like they're both going to be rotating for this one. Makes a lot of sense, but, you know, do they have the ultimates? Not quite yet, they can look for the big plays however. Again, this is something we've seen a lot of the blue side. Uh, okay, this is interesting. Noble actually just going to give up both mid harpies and go fight. for the back. Yeah, back harpies instead. It's not a situation you want to find yourself in. But the way the team comps were working out, the way the ultimates online were available, Yomi could have just looked to force a fight, and they just flat out would have wanted the way the abilities and ultimates would have come into play. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see the ultimate coming out from Poseidon there. You've also got the ultimate coming out from Athena if you need required. Then, what, what have you got on the side of Noble Esports? Like, you've got a Nemesis ult, and you've got a World Weaver. It's not going to be much, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be much in the way of picks. What you're really looking for from Noble Esports here is looking for an individual pick on somebody out of position. That's what their comp will be. Yomi's is all about group them up and blow them up. That's the whole composition they really have here. And if they can keep winning these, like, mid harpy engagements... Uh, and get them for free, then they're slowly going to take a lead. And we've seen today already quite a few good Tectonic shifts coming out from Kabraken. You place it properly, there's three members on the side of Noble Esports who don't actually have an escape option. Well, or two. Sometimes numbers. Um, no, is it three? Yeah, three. Uh, just uh, yeah. Junipera and Lou. Geb, Nemesis, Shibalanka. They have no way to get out of that wall, so if it's placed well, they're going to be in trouble. And that's... I, I, not only that, they have Poseidon as well. So the other two members, oh, you can leap out, not with a cripple, you can't. 
Nope, not with a cripple, you cannot, and that's the important thing we're going to see coming out from Poseidon in this game. It's going to be up to Omri Lundqvist to try and land these. Four minutes in, 0-0, zero, zero, experiencing gold, favouring Yomi after that early game mid harpies that went for free. But jungle is starting to be cleared again by both teams here. TV dropping down a ward on this left-hand side, ready for that purple buff spawning. Lou's going to be a little bit careful here, level 6, but way below half health at the moment, and Omri Lundqvist might be another level. Goosey Goosey Gander over to this side as the combo is trying to be used by Met Yankee over on this side with the taunt, but that ultimate does not connect, and they're not going to find the kill. It's tricky. Stone Shield is a fairly long cooldown, but at the same time, they have no real way to ban it otherwise. They're going to steal away the purple buff, get that in the hands of Met Yankee. They're going to look for Junipero here as well. Possibly taunt comes in on the back of the Cataclysm. Darks with nice knee throw heading over as well, trying to find damage, trying to find kills and escapes, but Yomi Crack finds him. first blood from Relinquished. Yep, Kraken was used. It wasn't even needed on Judy Perry there. Lou does get out barely with his life. Surprised me to see Yomi go for this Gold Fury straight away here, but they're just going to go back to farming again with that first blood. It pays off for them. BK Haste mm -hmm. going to drop down his red buff there, and there wasn't a whole lot um, Noble Esports could do there. It's also worth noting, however, yeah, that first blood just finally got picked up, but even before that, Yomi were running away with a pretty strong, not running away necessarily, but had a pretty strong gold lead. About 300 over that solo lane, Scaredy just having issues wave clearing against that Bologna, that wave after wave being pushed towards the tower. I believe he was forced back at some point as well. Mid lane, Gilly's looking for something, but yeah, the graph coming up on the screen, you can see just a slow, slow bleed going to Yomi. Slow, slow bleed indeed. The pressure in mid lane is still going on. Woo woo over this right lane. Did start Death Toll. Has Warrior Tabby on lane. Meanwhile, Scary D gone for a very defensive build. Probably going for the Mystical Male rush <laughs> here on this Fen rear. Mid lane, though, once again, just checking in with them. You can see Doom Orb on Omri and Lukic. This is going to like power spike those Krakens a little bit early, especially if he doesn't die. Mid hoppies are available. Kraken is down, though, and Gilly going to zone out three. Here comes Athena, looking to find damage, not going to be able to do so, they were able to disengage just in time, but again, left side Harpy Camp going to be going more or less uncontested to Yomi. They're going to try and sneak the right side in, BK Haste rotating over that, but Wu is here from the solo lane, he's going to run to two, he has that hand of the gods as well, he can look to secure that quickly. Again, Yomi going to be securing both mid Harpy Camps. You really can't be letting this happen, if you let this, the slow, it, it's a slow bleed, but that wound is gradually getting ripped open little by, by little, and Yomi are going to be able to start capitalizing on the lead they're building for themselves soon. This is one of the things people underestimate about Kabraken as well. What you saw on Gilly there, he's, he did charge in with that seismic crush, you are root immune during that, so Neath, her benefit of keeping people in place and doing high damage while she does that, does, falls to the wayside against Gilly, so he's going to force a backflip every single time, and if he blinks, well... He's going to have a bad time with that one, especially when there's a, a crippling Whirlpool available as well from on Relinquish. Yomi looking pretty Ooh, good right lane. now. Woo -woo. Playing a dangerous game, looking for the lazy back in the middle of the Left mini wave. Juniper is going to go down though to a taunt wombo combo with the support of Met Yankee as well there. Going to drop that one down and there's not a whole lot she could do. But yep, the solo lane kill is going to relieve some pressure for Noble. But there is a potential goal for your attempt here available for Yomi. Yeah, even that said, Wu still is up by about 300 gold right now. It's not a great situation. Scary D has been hurting for farm. Worldweave's gonna charge, looking for this pick here. Mid lane, Gilly gonna find a stun onto him. Adjust trying to find damage for this kill. Scary D roaching from that solo lane, trying to find the kill as well. BKS finally secures oh. it, detonating that broken weave. That'll be a kill for those guys. Noble Esports. That was damn weaves. They're down on gold, they're down on kills, they're down on experience. But with that pick, they're looking to even things back out and show they're not out of this one yet. Yeah, it gives them a bit of an opportunity here. Juniper is going to go and sentry ward the Gold Fury. Now clear out, gives them some vision control here. They can't really do it right now. Unreal Quish is in the area on full health. No Kraken available though. And BK Hayes has a full minion wave to deal with mm -hmm. in the lane. I mean, as we look towards the mid to late game standpoint though, we are going to see the Team Cup of Noble Esports come a little bit more online. Geb will eventually hit that tankier status around level 9, level 10. At the moment though, he's two level, sorry, level down on TV. Um, across the way though, we're also going to see the two Hunters. They're going to be online with that front line with scary d and adjust there as well adjust will hit his flow eventually and then this game could switch back to noble yeah it's still anybody's game for the time being at least gold fury is still up and available yomi have now counter counter warded got vision control established over there once again taking a little peek down at the items not really anything too big online we talked about the doom War. we talked about the heart seeker in the mid lane as well stacks pretty much equal on both those guys neither one have died Talaria boots online for Geb, extra mobility, some extra health regen. Athena, though, TV going for that extra cooldown reduction for more taunts more frequently. As 
Oh, right side. This was pop Ooh, there. Trouble. Go for the big gank over there. Yep, they're going to actually find Wu under the tower. A good call and a good use of the ultimate from Lou there just to deny vision and actually get himself an assist on the board for that as well. They could potentially bring down the tower here, but sticking around means the goal for you could be a threat. So mm -hmm. a wise idea to go back. Left side though, Lou could be in a bit of trouble. Gets away with the Jaguar. Yeah, so left side uh, purple buff was stolen away the last time by Yomi. This time, no, no, maybe Gilly's waiting nearby looking for the steal. He'll have the stun, he'll have the double stun here potentially as well if you can take a couple hits of damage. The purple buff will end up going the way Noble Esports can up himself. Tectonic shift comes down, oh. looking for damage, looking for the kills. World Weaver catches Gilly as Juni gets taunted back into the Wombo combo, but does he find the Petrify? TV finds the kill nevertheless. And adjust is in a bit of trouble there as well. Has to dash away. Scary D has turned up on this fame where with that mystical mail, but here comes on Reloop Quish as well. Watch out for Krakens, because they do tons of damage. As we're especially with that uh, massive amount of damage with that Doom Mob too. Double kill for Reloop Quish. That'll be a goal, Fury. Yep. BK Haste will not be able to contest this against four man army of Yomi. We should be able to secure this one. Met Yankee should be on zoning due for the most part here. BK Haste gonna look for a kill if possible. But Met Yankee say none of that, son. Get out of my house. Now, Met Yankee right now does have that Heart Seeker fully stacked. Devourer's Gauntlets did come out from Lou, playing the safer route, but right now, Met Yankee has the upper hand. It's hitting for a decent bit harder, 162, well, 154, with the Warrior Tab I completed as well, kind of evening things out overall. Life steal in line for both, so it's kind of a back and forth, but the big difference is that extra physical power from that Heart Seeker makes that Medusa, those abilities, she's kind of like a pseudo caster hunter. Those abilities she's going to be throwing around, we're going to hurt a decent bit more on the back of those, that Heart Seeker being fully stacked. Yeah, on top of the house, if you've been fully stacked, it is actually starting to wreck a little bit. Six to four, though, are Yomi Noble Esports are no way out of this just yet. The gold differential is pretty significant for the stage of the game when it's 10 minutes, but it's not enough to break the back of Noble Esports. And with their composition, like we said, mid to late game, could swing backwards again. It's up to Yomi to keep this going, really, and not allow Noble to actually look for picks, which is what Adjust is doing right now on the right. No beads online, nothing we can really look to do. Eagles Rally will buy some time. World Weaver is on its way. BK Haste from across That's the, the map. Secure That's the that game kill. plan. That is all Noble Esports is looking to do time and time again. Get a pick every single time. Their composition works well with that. They've got mm -hmm. Darkest of Knights for the Global Ultimate to get an assist. They've got World Weaver for the assist or even the kill if required. And then they've got the Nemesis to slow down, shred those protections for the burst damage. Totally made on TV. Looking for Judy Para. Judy Para is going to explode in that crack in the Whirlpool combo. Pick up the Gab, destroy the Gab, and Scary D is in trouble too. Finally, have an unchained out to safety. He will survive the engagement. Gilly still roaming around looking for a possible little pick. Just has spotted that one out. Scary D able to continue and complete his recall successfully. But yeah, no, uh, Noble Esports have been playing this game very well. They're shutting down Wu Wu. Earlier on, he was at about a 500 gold lead just on the back of out pushing Scary D. He forced him back to base a couple times, pushed the mini ways to tower repeatedly. Since then, Scary D is now in the lead, not only for, uh, he's in the lead level-wise, he's still a little behind on gold, that is partially because of the gold fury getting picked up, but they've pretty much stabilized on it, they're putting the pressure on Wu in that solo lane, and trying to make sure that on Bologna, she's not able to get to the point where she's that big mid-game menace and able to affect team fights I mean, too much. They're picking on Wu-Wu right now, but the thing is, is they've got a Poseidon with Doom Mob fully mm -hmm. stacked in mid lane, and they've got a Medusa fully stacked Heartseeker in duo lane, and they're focused on the guy that's building tanky. Yeah. They may get kills there, but is it going to be worthwhile when you should be looking to try and bring down one of these stackers, especially this Poseidon? Poseidon's going to be an issue throughout this whole game if this goes on. Give me another pick onto Wu in the right lane. Another small factor to that, you said those are the targets you ideally want to look for, but you look Left for positioning side. on the map. So having little players like this, where you look for the Darks of Knights offensively from Lou, mm -hmm. the way Yomi are positioning their team, Noble Esports really haven't had the opportunity to pick off either the uh, Poseidon That's right. or the Medusa or Met Yankee. So it's not just a case of, oh, we should just kill these guys. It's a case of, if we try to kill these guys, we're going to have a full team fight on our hand, which we might not necessarily want at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a rough situation from Scary D. Going to be meeting up against Gilly in this lane with that Mr. Camilla. Just is here, though, but guess who else has turned up to this party? On Relinquished and TV on the way on that Athena. Maybe they'll die if this. They probably will if they can get a good taunt. There it is onto a just. Is the Kraken available? No. Titanic Shift does connect. Kraken is available on Lion, but they wait for the right opportunity. They're looking for both. The greed of Yomi might actually pay off for them here. No, it will not. They'll only find one, but they will find the tower on this right-hand side. And right now, Gold Fury is down. It's here one tower. Met Yankee doing good. 1v2. Not really too uh, deterred. <laughs> Boxing back and forth, actually, as Juni wow, was looking to back off. That's that two level advantage, plus that Heart Seeker, plus the Warrior Tab I coming out. Met Yankee 1v2 in that duel lane is scary as hell right now.
Mm -hmm. That's the power of Medusa. If she can get herself going, she could be in a good position. Plus, don't forget, Junipera is on the squishier side right now. Level 10. Yeah. She's not had the greatest of games because she's been focused by the team, which is the right sort of thing you want to do against the Gab early game if you can find it. Especially when you've got the likes of Krakens available. Just mm -hmm. drop it onto that rock every single time and you'll find out that it turns to mud. There With we go. Purple... Science lessons. Yeah. <laughs> A little smashing involved along the way as well, but like you said, it works out quite well. Supports generally, until they get their sovereignty online initially, are really a squishy target ripe for the picking, which is what Yomi have been doing in these team fights. Why allow, allow those stone shields to come out? Why allow that crowd control, that shutdown, uh, to come out from the support when you can just kill them first, and then just look to kill everyone else on the backside of the fight? Oh, six to eight are Yomi right now up in gold and experience. 8.5k experience. Four and a half thousand gold lead as well. The second go of the game should be spawning relatively soon. And Noble Esports will be looking for this one and trying to turn it around because that's what they really need here is this goal for you just to stem the tide, so to speak, in this game. Mm -hmm. It is going to be spawning. It's swooping down, ready to take roost in the middle of that pit. Contention will be starting here sooner rather than later, more likely than not. Yomi can finally look for that big fight. Teleport's not online right now for Wu with us. He will not be able to join that fight. No teleport either for Scary D, so there's no concern of him showing up out of nowhere. But Lou, going to be forced Lou to rise speeds. in Jaguar. He lost speeds as well. He Ooh. bees into Rising Jaguar, so that's a 180 second cooldown just as the Golfio is spawning. Meanwhile, Scary D does solo. Woo woo. This is the, the hope for Noble there. Is this Fenrir? Getting he's taking a lot of poke against BK Haste here and a good blink initiation from Junipera. This could be a good fight for Noble. A good taunt comes in from TV, but there's really no follow up. The oh. Poseidon Kraken came in the middle of that fight, but everyone else able to escape. BK is World Weaver flying on in. We'll find Met Yankee. But right now, just not really able to pursue. Lou in a bad spot as well, as far as health bar is concerned. Scary D has arrived at the whole party. As Met Yankee falls. Yeah, she's dead. A bottom really quick. She's trying to do work and bring down a Joss. He's going to get chased down by multiple members of the team. We're surrounded by four. A thief is going to move with the protections, but he'll evaporate. And now it's going to be TV in a bit of trouble here. The Tony's is going to buy him time. He's going to get back to tower safety. And that gives them the opportunity to defend this goal. Fury still, but it's not easy. Teleport, though, is coming in from Woo Woo. He'll have that option, as well as TV with that Athena able to preempt the strike forward, taunt, and fire off the Wrath of Gods for the steal. Scary D trying to zone him out and stop him, but TV is not concerned. He's going to force the reset, but reset. they're going to look for kills here instead. Well, well they found the kills because there you're going to see TV evaporate by BK Haste's root combination, Scary D. Now it's only Woo Woo here. You're going to see Gilly on the way back, but the call from Noble is to reset, 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 mm -hmm. because they're not happy about the engagement with their health bars being as low as they are. You don't want to mess with blood when you have to get that grouped up. Eagles rally into a hammer bash would have been probably two kills, if not three outright. So good call by Noble Esports to back off on that one. It's trading your support to stop the enemy team from getting 1,500 gold. That's worth it in my book. It is indeed. So 11 to 9, Gold Fury still stands. The experience in gold is slightly starting to dip in Sorry, it's about starting to dip in gold lead for Yomi. Noble Esports did okay for themselves there, but the experience is still... Pretty significantly in their favor at 6,000. Lou and the boys of Noble, though, are going to be heading back over to this goal for you one more time and start it up again. As I don't think Yomi know much about this. Will they have an idea? Because Scary D's on the way. But will they get here in time? They're going to look for a hand that got some the Noble which will secure it. The fight is on. Medusa finds a nice Petrify. As Unreal Chris finds a kill with that Poseidon. Kraken as well. Damage and the kill. Ouch. Three quick ones in the back. Met Yankee looking for BK Hayes. They're going to be dancing back and forth. Scary D going to use that Ragnarok to look to escape. This is going to be a even, kind of a close trade. If they can find Scary D, I'll call that a victory in Yomi's favor. He's able to sneak away. Experience-wise, went to Noble. Gold slightly in favor. Or excuse me, experience going with Yomi, to Yomi with those kills. Gold just slightly in favor. Noble with that gold fear pickup. But this is oh, where... Call. Yeah. Good call. Really good call coming out from Yomi here. They win the engagement with the all-in combo. I mean, they've got such a great team fight combination. Oh, Relinquish, that's not how you attack a fire giant, buddy. You're probably going to die for that one because you're going to go back and fight Scary D in your back. Up your backside, in your jacksie, you're gonna drop. The knockup was huge. BK Haste finds a kill here. The Gold Fury, sorry, the Fire goes to Yomi, but they're losing a lot of lives. That was risky. They, they lost let, many. They let BK Haste just sit in the back of the Fire Giant and just apply damage. They just turned on him for a second or two. Boom, boom, boom. Ability, ability, ability. You're dead. Now we can turn our full attention back. They had the. Oh, maybe not. Now, Juniper was just respawning, so it would have been a close call. They got the gold, uh, the fire giant. That's the important bit. But the disappointing factor of it, Met Yankee was not alive to receive that buff. They'll have it. It's off the table. It's extra gold. It's extra regen for some of those guys. They're not really. Oh, they can. I don't know. I was admit, not really about to siege too much with it, but there's two tier one towers with pretty much no health left on board. It's a free thousand gold if they can get near them. 
talk about that one does fall for noble esports on the right hand side as bk Hayes rotates over to pick that one up fire giant is online for three members it's not the three members they prefer it on though i'm more than likely Absolutely. to like it onto met yankee and unrelinquished and that's a a good thing for noble esports at this stage as well as those stacks were halved again in that engagement so doom over 18 stacks right now and heart seeker at 17 so it's going to take a couple of ways for these boys to get themselves back up to those full stacks and get the massive amounts of burst they can do well, Poseidon won't be too deterred by that. He has the war Warlock Session line anyway. He wants to get those stacks with up. Get that extra health, health and magical power. Otherwise, state of the game is pretty close. Yomi are slowly but surely losing their lead. Noble Esports have been fighting quite well. That Fire Giant kind of turned around that overall engagement fully in favor of Yomi. But on the tail end of it, Noble Esports are still a pretty good fight, spot to fight going forward. They're going to group up, take this tier 1 tower in the left lane to try to stop Bologna from split pushing the mid lane at the same time. Scary doesn't look for the tier 2 right. But they need to make sure they're able to deal with this push from Yomi here in the left lane before they start losing more and more objectives. Blinking, Judy Perry gets a good five man cataclysm off, but it doesn't do much because there was no one there to support. There's a nice stock from Met Yankee with that armor. Judy Perry's going to evaporate in a second, and she does. All five members of Yomi still alive, looking for more. Wait for TV with the taunt. It'll be up in a second. If you can get three, it'll be a big three man. Three seconds to go, two seconds, one second. Watch TV. Scary D gonna get caught by all the abilities. Gilly picks up the kill and finds that one. Just in the back line this fight, however. Try and do what he can, but he is now isolated and alone. I'm gonna try and focus down this tier 2 tower. It's 1500 gold. That's gonna be going in the bank for Yomi. So, so far, Fire Giant not necessarily on the ideal gods, but they've been making good use of it. They took two towers and found themselves a couple kills, mm -hmm. and they still have a minute and 30 seconds remaining on it. It's gonna be enough for well, I mean, the damage. Free in the damage. The damage of the fire giant might not be on them, but what it is happening is that the tankier targets have it, so they can mm -hmm. just tank up these towers and then regen afterwards. And you can see their HP bars very high, still keeping on TV once again, as well as Gilly. The blink initiations available, the taunts are available too. And Judy Perry is going to walk forward to try and zone them one more time, but she may just pay the iron price again, as nobody's really there to support. Stone Shield comes out, going to be able to keep herself alive, but now the rest of her team is not going to have that luxury for about 15 more seconds. They were able to save this tier 2 tower, and it looks like Yomi going to go ahead and let this one go. Mid Harpies are up. They have a little bit of time left, a decent chunk of golden hand. You don't want to overstay your welcome and throw away the little bit of an advantage you kind of gave yourself back yet again. Noble Esports, we saw already, they're not afraid of fighting from behind. They were able to deter that lead a little bit, but at the same time, I would like this call to back off, kind of regroup, heal everybody back up, not just the tanks, and just say, you know what, we, we made good use of this Fire Giant buff. Gold Fury is up in a little bit. Let's group up, get wards, get our vision control back up, and get ready for these next big teamfight objectives that are coming up in a few minutes. Fire Giant going to be running out relatively soon, but they did get a couple of towers. Not many did Yomi get there. They only really got three, and one was already weaker anyway, so it wasn't the best thing for them. Yeah. The gold lead, not that much still. The experience has eva has increased again to 10k. And you can see that in the level differential between the two. Most of this, honestly, though, is between... Actually, it's not between the supports anymore. I actually, Pearl's done a good job of catching up. Where's mm -hmm. most of this gold experience lead? Support uh, the AD like carries, mid. as well as the junglers. Mm, AD. No, and AD's mid. two levels. Okay, uh, mid, mid, mid's the biggest one, I think, between the two. Well, the Gold Fury... Dance has started early, finding a taunt onto Scary D. Crack, uh, Whirlpool rather dropped down. Kraken not going to be used quite yet. Saving that, looking for as many targets as he possibly can find. Yomi have really the advantage here. Gilly can drop down that wall, stop Juni from looking to roll in. He has the blank, but it's going to be a fight as it is dropping quickly. Go Gilly on zone due with those tremors doing good work, but they're all grouped up now for the top for TV into the Medusa ultimate as well. The shield was good for Lou from Judy Para. Gilly is in trouble here, but they've got no damage to bring it down as TV's tanking up the front side. It just does finally bring down Gilly, but on the back we're starting to see a Kraken evaporate Lou and BK Hayes is in trouble too. Yep, that was well placed and timed coming out from Unreal English to find that one. Gold Fury once again start up. Juni's on his way and can she find it? Getting zoned out already. Stone Shield is now on cooldown. Gold Fury is getting low. There's a threshold. There's Wrath of the Gods. Yomi will secure that one. So one for one plus a Gold Fury. Yomi take yet another overall team fight victory. But again, messy, messy fights coming out as Noble Esports found and a good engagement initially. But once mm -hmm. that Kraken finally came out from Poseidon, the tide of that fight just turned.
I mean, it's all honestly, it's all about Noble Esports hanging it on here. If they can keep holding these towers, keep the Fire Giant up for the time being, they will slowly start to trickle their way to level 20. These itemization builds are slowly starting to come online for their two hunters. You can see Neef's working on that executioner there. You can see crit is being worked on right now for Lou as well. So once that crit comes on with those bowlers during the team fights, that bowler virus will cause so many issues on these grouped up teammates that you will see coming out of Yomi because they've got quite a melee heavy team. It's a 60% damage increase if you're hitting two targets. It's AoE damage, it's not just a straight focus, but Shibalake with that and his passive is essentially the highest damage late game AD carry in the game. It's just something absolutely much to deal with. It's a full-time physical power steroid from his passive. He has the kills. Only seeing on one so far, so only plus five. Not quite that plus 30, but Shibalanke is a force to be reckoned with. Met Yankee late game. He still is going to be doing a lot of burst damage with a full Medusa combo, but he's not going to be ripping through the entire team fights like Shibalanke will. Well, right inside, the has been engaged, and again, the reinforcements are here of Noble Esports, though they're going to evaporate Lutin Runkush before he can even get the Kraken off. In the Ragnarok mouth is Gilly, and Gilly is in trouble here. He's tanky, but not tanky enough to withstand the full force of Noble Esports. Yomi would not in position then and got caught. This is Noble Esports' his chance now in a 3v5 to take the Fire Giant and bring this game back. They can definitely look for forces when out. TV comes on in. Just hold the Fire Giant and ram that 40% mark. They're not going to be able to burst it down. You can just look for kills as soon as they turn attention. They're looking to do both right now as Lou is more than capable of soloing this Fire Giant. They're going to look to lock up TV in the backside of this fight. And they're doing a good job at it. Cataclysm comes out from Junipera. Looking to lock it down. Wrath of the Gods is about to come off the table. If they can find the kill, Scary D with the Unchained does find it. Producing now trying to bring him down. Finds an answer kill. One for one so far. The Fire Giant actually has been forced to be reset. As now the question is going to be, can they now disengage and keep themselves oh, alive just... and do the same thing? Well, we was in a bit of trouble here. He got a lot of damage out, but the backflip used by BK Hayes there to disengage means that Wuwu will live to fight another day. Like you said, the Fire Giant stands. I don't think they've got the health to really do. Ooh, they're going to go for it. They this... are. TV Maybe is... this... Actually, this... I'm a bit worried. Wuwu just teleported back. I think this this could be a mistake. Eagles Rally is Maybe. not available. Fire Giant stops that threshold. Fire Giant finds a just. They come in. Fire Giant is going to force off right now. Wrath of the Gods Judy. does come down to secure it. Woo Woo finds a pair of kills, however, on the back of that one. So, overall, good. look who still has the Fire Giant buff on the side of Noble Esports. Yep, the two hunters have that Fire Giant buff. They say, oh, Woo Woo. Woo Woo's looking for the lazy back of Lou there. Not going to find it. And now, <laughs> BK Hayes lazy backing himself, trying to bait him in underneath. Meanwhile, though, Yomi in mid lane with Met Yankee and TV going to push down this tier 2 tower and trade back some of that gold and experience they lost from that Fire Giant being down. But these two hunters... And Scary D now back up. They should be able to hold for the moment, but they may lose their tier 2 tower in right lane as well. Which means that even though Noble get that fire giant, they're only buying themselves time. They're not going to be able to go on the offensive. We touched on it last time when Yomi had that fire giant buff and all the tanky frontliners. They're not going to have that sustained overtime uh, regen on their frontliners. Scary D, Junipera, adjust. They're going to any poke they take is essentially going to be permanent. And when you have a uh, you know Poseidon coming out, the acid sprays from Met Yankee, they're going to be taking a lot of poke when they're grouping up trying to set up sieges on these towers. They're going to do extra damage. They're also not going to have an easy time getting close to those towers to apply it. Well, we'll see what's going to happen now with this team of Noble Esports. I'm surprised we're not seeing even more physical protection coming out. I really love TV's build. TV's really, really smart in this build, actually. Mm -hmm. He went Sovereignty. He's gone away from Heart Ward Amulet, gone for Midgardian Mail. Why? Because he gets four, four physicals yeah. and, and a magical geb, as well as now working on that Witchblade. That Witchblade is going to wreck, and people have forgotten the strength of a Witchblade. TV hasn't, though, and he's actually going to be picking that one up soon. He should be relatively close to that gold. That's going to swing the fight again into Yomi's favor. If he can stay in the mix with that tankiness, which he has, he's going to cause big problems for Noble's damage composition. Yeah, looking at it across the board as well, six so far Iron Mail-based items coming out on the side of Yomi, and it makes perfect sense. Like you said, for physical damage, yeah, Geb has some percentage-based magical damage. She, Juniper, is not going to be the big concern in these fights. It's those other four members. And they can continue to maybe look to sneak in a little bit more physical protection as well, because there's still a couple slots available for the taking. You know, why not pick a hide in the immune lineup on Athena? She has so much protections already. It's going to take forever to kill her, and you're reflecting back a decent chunk of the damage you will take. Gold Fury, though, swooping on in, ready to spawn and get... Well, I don't know why she would necessarily swoop into her own demise, but she does it repeatedly. We'll see who picks that one up. The ward battle is already on, as both teams kind of grouping up. 
No blue sports, not able to do anything thus far with that fire giant buff they picked up. Mm, the gold fury has been started by Yomi. No blue sports in the area. There's a blink initiation from Judy a little bit too early. Only connected with Gilly. And the gold fury does reset, but the engagement is for Gilly. They're looking for him, but a great top from TV's by time. Meanwhile, Scary D on the backside is under pressure from Woo Woo and the boys. He's going to go down Kraken. Only really connects with Adjust there, who survives. So now, good route from BK. Hey, he's going to buy some time for the bowler virus to do work, but Judy's the one who's going to be another casualty of wall. Two for zero in favor of Yomi on that trade. Yeah. And they should get the Golf Fury too. Maybe they're looking to end, actually. They, it's definitely a possibility. Respawn times are quite long. 35 seconds on both Juni and Scary D right now. They're going to look for a couple more kills here on the left-hand side. That fight basically came down to Scary D chasing too far in the back. Like, he did a great job of zoning out three members of Yomi. But as soon as they realized that it was him zoning out completely three members and he was otherwise completely alone, we can just turn on him, burst him down quickly, and just look to keep fighting on the back of his death. So left side Phoenix, more likely than not, going to be brought down here in just a moment. Respawns are going to be coming up in about 10 seconds. They're going to need to look to back off as the poke coming back and forth right now is looking like it's not in a great spot, but they're going to be able to successfully disengage on, the, on that one. Good disengage, and they do get the ball. They went there for which is the fire generator. Just once more, though, they're trying to continue this aggression onto Wu Wu. Wu has to use Eagle's Rally to disengage, and it looks like they will get out scot free towards the Gulf Fury, which I don't think is the best call. This is risky, boys. If you get spied, yeah, back up. Good lads. Good lads of Yomi. Yeah. Very, very intelligent. Give up that Gulf Fury. It's worthwhile to drop a gold for that Phoenix and be ready for the fire giant fight, which is coming up. Absolutely. Fire Minion's going to be forcing somebody to head over to that left hand lane to deal with them. So, Fire Giant fight, Yomi are have, going to have themselves a pretty strong advantage. Golden experience-wise, they are sitting in the lead still by quite a bit, but it's been kind of a bumpy road for them. Noble Esports have found many, many teamfight victories and successes so far, but it's still that gradual downward slide going towards the Yomi side of the graph. So we'll have to see if Noble Esports can once again pull off a little bit of a sneak here at the Fire Giant and secure one for themselves and stop Yomi from potentially getting the Fire Giant uh, pickup that will lead to what could potentially be the end of the game. So a penetration build coming out from BK Hayes here. Not going to go for the crit, going to go for the Warrior's Bane. Looking to penetrate through the amount of armor that Yomi have actually put on. Really smart idea not to go for the crit there. Meanwhile, we're going to see Lou with those crits. Going to be available with that Bowler Virus. This fight is key to Noble Esports' last stand. They have to fight at this Fire Giant, and they have to either win this fight decisively or take the Fire Giant to buy themselves enough time. But Yomi, they want to fight. They want to kill, and they're going in. They just found a just on the right hand side of this fight. She's buying time with the retribution shield. Will stay alive. Dark Knights has been used. Eagles rally dropped down the middle of this one. Cataclysm from Juni finds two, but will it be enough right now? It's not really telling either way. As Scary D in the back, not able to find someone in those jaws of the Ragnarok from Fenrir. A messy fight. Disengage. All elements have been used. The Kraken is still up TV with a three-man taunt. There's no Kraken just yet, though. BK Haste does backflip away. Left-hand side adjust, but there's the Kraken. Not really working out well, though, for Yomi. And nobody spots are slowly starting to chip down these HP bars. And it might go in their favor. It's going to be a close call. Those help bars on both teams are dropping quite rapidly. No Blue Sports a little worse for the wear as they go back in just a little far forward. Might get picked up. Good World Weaver stops Wu securing that kill. Lou very low, barely escaping. Health bars so low, but if you don't take that last point of health off, it doesn't matter. TV finds number is one. Dead. BK Hayes does go down as well to Met Yankee, and now Yomi are the ones that live. The disengage and re-engage is good. Scary D, where are you going, son? That's not the way to safety. Maybe he's just trying to buy time for his team, but what it will cost is the Fire Giant, and he will pay with his life to Gilly, as the two remaining teammates of Noble had to retreat to defend the Titan. And this Fire Giant, what is with the guys? Like, can North America not tank this? Uh, apparently not. Like, what's going on? Channeling going their on? inner Moex on this one. They do secure it in the end. No one died to the fire giant this time. Junipero just way too far away to get there in time for that steal. With that, that left lane Phoenix is still down. That will be weakened for the remainder of the game. Tier, uh, the two remaining Phoenixes in the other lanes, probably not long for this world with Yomi. Five men fire giant buff. They just went back to base the shop. They don't need to worry about taking a Phoenix and going back. If they find a pick at this point in the game, they're able to pull somebody back in, burst somebody down. They have that taunt Medusa combo, they have that taunt crack, and they have the gilly for the wall of doom that is a tectonic shift to block somebody from retreating. One or two kills could be, that would likely be the game going the way of Noble Esports. They need to find a good pick from Scary D, get Met Yankee back, get Unrelinquished back, take the damage out of Yomi, and shut down their potential push towards that Titan. This fight has been crazy. That fight was one of the best fights I've seen in the Challenger Cup for a very, 
very long time. I'm going to have to see exactly what's going to go on from that because I, I can see these both teams being able to compete. Yomi's looking pretty good for a new team. They've got a lot of work to do to get themselves there, but the signs of life there. Nobody spots really struggling at the moment. They didn't have a good last week and they're struggling in this game as well with their composition. Johnny Perry going in there with the Cataclysm Shockwave combo. Going to get walled off as well. The engagement is almost over. Eagles Rally connects too. Journey will be the first one to fall in this fight. Scaredy, once again, not able to find anyone with that Ragnarok Deeds. Unfortunately, is the bane of that ability with one of their two tanky frontliners down right now. That tier, uh, the Phoenix in the mid lane will fall left side. It already fell once. It's not going to be up very long, and it falls again immediately. It's a 4v5 for the next 37 seconds. That right side, Phoenix, they're going to go for it. They don't want, you know, why not take a little bit of extra protections off? They have time to play with right now as well. Noble Esports mm -hmm. definitely have their backs against the wall. TV looking for a tone, gonna find it into a crack and scary D half health and a just no health as Met Yankee brings him down back from BK Haste. Well, he's still gonna get chased out by Met Yankee as the Phoenix does fall. The final Phoenix of the game falls for the side of Noble Esports and neither the Titan will stand firm against the Yomi game. Yomi moved themselves on over Noble Esports. Well played by those guys. Noble Esports were able to take week number one, but two weeks in a row, they have not had full rosters in these matchups. Maybe a little bit of effect. Scary D was forced out a little bit earlier on the game, and you know, Fenrir is a great god. The problem is that Ragnarok can be very unreliable. Someone uses beads, and it's like, the ability now doesn't really do a whole lot more for me. That's unfortunate. Nevertheless, that was a very back-and-forth game. Noble Esports were winning fights left, right, and center, but Yomi were just able to keep that kind of slow bleed going the entire game and eventually turn that into a victory. Yeah, I mean, they did a really, really good job of just constantly keeping up with what their game plan was. They didn't really allow Noble Esports to get theirs off the ground, which was generally a pick comp, right? We said that mm -hmm. early on. They got one or two picks onto Yomi. But other than that, like, that was the, their sort of game plan. Get to late game and then destroy with Guardians and Double Hunters. But it didn't work out as well as they wanted to. And so they're going to fall to the wayside in the semifinals. They'll be down to... That's a quarterfinal match. I apologize. Yeah. It'll be in two quarterfinals. And we'll see how the rest of the brackets are going on shortly, guys. We'll be right back with the action from that one.